So I think when we get to a point where we can actually do some of these studies, brain scans of people who are having these experiences, we'll be able to start addressing this explanatory gap in terms of sort of the mechanics of how the brain works versus how it produces these subjective states of feeling and consciousness. And that's the big piece that's missing right now. I think certainly it's possible to take different types of psychoactive drugs that we know have a particular mechanistic function. They interact with a certain receptor in a certain part of the brain and do brain scans and look at that part of the brain light up after that drug is administered. And then to be able to use subjective questionnaires and feelings to actually begin to start mapping brain states as a function of brain chemistry. Uh, that to me is actually a, a really um, important goal that no one I think is really clearly articulated. But I think we're almost to the point where we could use a library of various types of psychoactive drugs and coupled with uh, advanced brain imaging techniques to actually start mapping a sort of cartography between what happens when a particular receptor in a particular brain area is activated, what brain state does that produce, what kind of feeling does that produce. And I think we're not too far away. I think the biggest holdup is sort of social perceptions that is this something we should do and should it be funded as a public priority and to me you know, that's sort of a no-brainer. I mean, I, who we are is a fundamental question, and mapping that out and seeing how the brain produces these states is not only interesting from that point of view, but I think will bear on various types of mental illness as well. I mean, if we know what part of the brain is activated in a positive way, we then can infer whether it, maybe it's turned off when we have certain types of mental illnesses. So I think it's fundamentally very important for a variety of reasons.